Good morning, St. Mary's. Good morning. So I got to tell you, all right, of course, it's the cantata today, and I'm standing in the back with the cantata, you know, and they come over, and there's always a little bit of nervousness with the choir on cantata day, not because they're nervous about singing, but because in church, I mean, when the choir loft is full, usually the pews are not. All right, as, and they come in and they're like, I think people actually came today. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they did too. Look around. It is a wonderful, wonderful morning this morning and so wonderful to have you all be here today as we do celebrate our Christmas cantata. And let's be honest one with another, right? Perhaps maybe more than any other season of the church's life. You can talk about Lent. You can talk about Easter. We can talk about Pentecost. You talk about all these different seasons. Perhaps in no other season is the gospel more found in the music than at Christmas. Yes? That at Christmas time, there's just something unbelievably special about the music of Christmas and how it invites us yet again back into the journey of discipleship of Jesus Christ, who doesn't begin that journey with wild, crazy proclamations, but starts with a baby in a manger. 
And we're so grateful to have our choir come and to share that message. Yet again, this annual message that we share, we never outgrow the simplicity of our Savior being born to a mother and a father and living this life just like we have. And we pray that that is the message that you take away from today. And so, friends, uh, the back half of our service today is going to be the cantata, the front half. We're going to light our Advent wreath as we always do. We're going to sing a little bit. We're going to hear the scriptures. And I pray that the opening of our service would open your mind and heart to hear what what our choir has for us today. And so in preparation for that, we invite you into a moment of silence as we ready ourselves to worship. Good morning. Please rise as you are able and join me in the call to worship. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sing, O daughter daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart. Lift up your voice in praise, for God has reversed his judgment against you and has scattered your enemies. Celebrate and sing for joy, for God, our mighty Savior, is present among us now. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please join in the first hymn in the blue chalice, Rejoice, You Pure in Heart. Thank you.
please be seated. Good to go. It's not only for peace that the Spirit visits our listening, but for the promise. All this barrenness, anticipation, hope, and the word of peace in the story of Advent is drawing us towards one profound and cosmos-shaping revelation. Christ is arriving to us. But it's no small thing that he arrives himself as a seed sown into the darkness of our lives, carried in the womb of humanity. God's beatific vision is one that grows up in our midst, as ordinary and common as any of the rest of us. Christ is the same with, with you and I today. We too are invited to hold Christ in the same promise within us, gestating in the, midst, in the midst of our daily living as hidden miracles, anticipating their full birth in God's timing. That's the greatest beauty of Advent. God, is, God has come to us and is in our midst. Like Mary, we're invited to ponder these things in our hearts as we carry the presence of Christ in each season and in every place of need. Through scripture, a visit of God's joy to the heart, a passing comment in a conversation with a friend, or through a line in a book or song, God speaks to our everyday needs and longings. To alert us and to begin and to open us up. Each each one awakens us in a bigger picture. The expect the expectations of change that arriving presence within us within us of his love and through this practice of holding God's promises within us and living with them that's true spiritual joy springing springing us up because joy is living in the delight of what God is going to do as much as what he already is it's prophetic like that it's not based on what we experience today but on who God is and what he has said he will do Be they biblical promises of Christ's ultimate victory or his own personal word to us today, by calling them to memory and holding them within our hearts, we can more fully live in the joy that God is and will arrive to us. Christ is coming, but in in Mary's story, we discover that he's also already here, sown in our midst, growing up within us, pouring out his peace and love. Friends, as we light the Advent uh, wreath today, we invite you to sing uh, verses 1 through 3 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11, and can be found on page 691 of your pew Bible. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, for my whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Here ends the reading. And please join me in the responsive reading. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my soul rejoices in God and my soul. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. And holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the crowd and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise, made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Today's New Testament reading comes from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Here ends the reading. And at this time, we turn our thoughts to our prayer request for this day. And we take strength from that final verse in 1 Thessalonians. But he who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. And it's in this promise that we lift up our prayer request for this day. 
And uh, on your insert, uh, there's a great deal of uh, prayer request updates. Um, we spent some time trying to figure out how some of those requests are doing. Um, I will not read all of them, but wanted you to make sure that you knew what was going on with some folks who have been on our list for some time. But I do have some updates I'd like to read and some additions to put on your list as well. We've been praying for a friend of Wanda Weller's, uh, Bev Osman, um, who's been battling cancer, and she is now in re remission and is gaining strength after treatment. And so for this, we give thanks. Continued prayers for Eddie Dutter, um, who is the cousin to Steve Dutter and Doug Dutter. Um, he is recuperating from ankle surgery. He, had, uh, he broke his ankle in a tractor accident. Um, he is going to need a second surgery to place more screws in that ankle. Um, he's currently in a walking boot. Um, and so they're hope, um, he's healing right now, and there's an appointment this week and hoping for some progress. So please continue to be in prayer for Eddie. We've been praying for another friend of Wanda Weller's, uh, Drusilla Short, who has been hospitalized with seizures. Um, she had gone home with some memory loss and was preparing for transplant and cancer treatments. Um, an update this week is that her symptoms have worsened and she has been admitted to the hospital. So please be in prayer for her. Please be in prayer for our dear sister, Maya Niclo. Um, Maya has been hospitalized with COVID. Um, and I know here at St. Mary, COVID, respiratory issues all over the place. Um, many of us still feeling the effects of that. But our sister Maya is particularly vulnerable, and so please be, uh, keep Maya in your prayers. Rose had an update for us on Mason Pot Potiger. Um, he had a young man who was battling lymphoma. He had a scan, and there is no active lymphoma. And so we give thanks for that. Um, he does have some tests and some trials to go, um, but nevertheless, um, a positive, uh, positive update um, right here, right before Christmas. And then also Rose's brother, Gary Furman. Um, he has been in a facility um, for, for some mental concerns and is struggling. Um, and initially, he was doing very, very well. And uh, they told him he was in for medical research. He was very happy about that. Um, but he's simply becoming antsy and starting to be unsure about why he's there. And so, um, so please continue to pray for him as he adjusts to being in a facility. And so with these updates and with these prayer requests in our minds and the things that you bring with you in the quiet of your hearts, let us go before our Lord and offer up our prayers. Lord, even in the midst of these prayer requests, may we find the faith and the strength to say with our sister Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Lord, at this time of the year, we feel loneliness in so many ways, even as we seek after joy and happiness. We feel the burden of this season. We feel the loss of those whom we're no longer able to be with. Lord, it's a season with a lot of feelings and a lot of concerns, Lord, and a lot of things weighing our hearts down. But just like Mary, you invite us, Lord, to rejoice in you for, that you, for you are present with us even in that loneliness. And so, God, we thank you that you bend your ear low to hear our prayer requests and to answer in accordance with your good and gracious will. And so, Lord, on this day, we continue our prayers for Bev Osmond, and we thank you for the good news of her remission, and we pray, continue to pray for her. We pray for Eddie Dutter as he continues to recover from this broken ankle, Lord, and we pray um, that, they would, that this appointment would show healing and that he would continue to make progress. We pray for Drusilla Short, Lord, as she, her symptoms have worsened and she's been admitted to the hospital. Lord, we pray for the doctors and nurses as they care for her, and we pray for some measure of success and healing in her life. We pray for our sister Maya, Lord, who's battling COVID, and Lord, our, Lord, we're always a little concerned about Maya, and so we lift her up to you, Lord, and ask that you would heal her. We pray for Mason Potiger, and we give you thanks for the positive report of no active lymphoma, and we Pray for continued healing, Lord, particularly at this time of the year. May Mason's family rejoice in this positive development. And we continue to pray for our brother Gary, Lord, as he adjusts um, to his care. And Lord, we pray that you would bring him peace in his soul and that you would be with his family as they care for him. Lord, these are the requests we've been given to lift up to you. Lord, hear us also as we lift up the things that we bring with us here today. All these things we ask, O oh God, because like our forebears of old, we too, rem we too pray that you, have, that you come to our help in remembrance of your mercy, according to the promise that you have made to us all. So Lord, help us to know your presence at this time. Help us to know your healing and love in our lives. And with joy, may we proclaim that to the world. 
All this we ask in name of our crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And together, as we follow in the way of our Savior, let us also pray the words that he taught us to pray as together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And with celebration that God hears us when we pray and that he answers in accordance with his good and gracious will, let us respond to these prayers with another wonderful Christmas hymn. We're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. We'll sing verses 1 and 2 of Go Tell It on the Mountain. And friends, we know this time of the year is a time for giving of gifts and expressing love. And one of the ways we do that as a congregation is through our participation in the offerings of the United Church of Christ. And we're very proud that we've been able to support those for many, many years. And at this time of the year, we collect a special offering that's known as the Christmas Fund. And the Christmas Fund goes out to those, um, to, uh, to usually retired ministers who have come under some kind of financial hardship or difficulty and trying to support those who have served the church with their lives um, through financial means. And so we, we're, we're very proud to collect up that offering uh, during this time of the year. We'd love to introduce you to that offering through a short video. We invite you to turn your attention to the screens. Additionally, financial assistance can be extended to lower income retired authorized ministers and to our lay church employees who struggle with their health premium payments. The Christmas Fund has been a source of care for over a century. This fund offers emergency grants, helps to supplement small annuities and covers health premiums. Every December, thank you gift checks are delivered to our lower income retirees. This year's Christmas Fund theme is Grace Upon Grace. And 
And so, friends, we invite you to give to that offering throughout the rest of December as you see fit. And if you're going to mark it on a check or whatever, just mark the Christmas fund. We'll be sure to, uh, to make sure that it goes where it needs to be. But, friends, we thank you for your gifts, not only to that, but to the work that we do here at St. Mary's. Thank you so much for blessing us at this time of the year. We're going to bring that offering forward, and we're going to invite you to stand as together we bless that offering by singing the doxology. Let us pray. Holy One, this Advent season we wait in joy and we give with joy. Joy for all you have given us, joy because of your sacred promises. Receive these generous offerings and use them to spread your joy in our world. Amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. It was, it was Isaiah who said that God is going to make praise spring up out of the ground. We are grateful that God would see fit to cause praise to spring up out of Silver Run and out of St. Mary's today as our choir comes to share with us. And so without further ado, um, I turn it over to our director, Jane Sharp, and to our, our choir. I'll save applause for the end. Okay, make it sure I got The choir has requested that we save all applause until the end. And if you would be so kind as to do that, we appreciate that. And so friends, enjoy. Good morning. Welcome to A Shepherd's Tale. It is a strange and wonderful story about something amazing that has happened to me many years ago when I was a little boy living in Bethlehem. Let's see. Yeah, it, it was about the time of the Roman Emperor, Caesar Augustus. He ordered a census. See, he wanted to make sure everyone on his tax list that he had everyone on his taxes because he wanted more money. So everyone had to travel to the towns of their ancestors to be counted for Caesar. Goodness, the roads were crowded with so many people, common people, people of faith, just like you and me. It was a hard time for God's people. We had been looking and praying for a Messiah to save us, but the Romans ruled for a long time and life went on. Still, we didn't give up. We listened as the priest read from the prophecies of Isaiah. We prayed and we hoped. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of darkness, upon them has light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and the peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness now and forevermore.
quiet town of Bethlehem people. It was an exciting place, but also very crowded. When my father asked me to spend a few days in the nearby hills with him, tending our flock of sheep, I was glad to get out of town. Well, I didn't realize it then, but among all those people coming to Bethlehem was a very special couple who would forever change our lives and our world. But Luke's gospel tells a story much better than I can. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all people should be counted. So Joseph traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which was the city of David. He was the, of the lineage of, of David. He traveled with Mary, his betrothed, with, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. I love being with my father out in those hills. The fresh air, the quiet nights sleeping by a small campfire under the brilliant stars. But that night, under that sky, something wonderful happened. I was lying on my back, enjoying the millions of stars that lit up the heavens. Suddenly, I noticed a new star that was far more brilliant than the others. As I watched, it grew bigger and bigger. I sat up and tagged in my father's robe, but he and other shepherds were so deep in conversation, they didn't notice it at first. Then I heard the distant sound of singing, heavenly angel voices, a glorious sound. The men stopped and gazed at the sky in wonder. Then to our utter amazement, an angel of the Lord stepped from the light and, well, as Luke says. In that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David, David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts promising God, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all people with whom he is pleased.
how excited we were when those angels left. The shepherds argued among themselves, and then drew lots to decide who would get to go to Bethlehem and who would have to stay with the sheep. It was my lucky night. My father and the others who were chosen hurried to Bethlehem. I had to run most of the way just to keep up with them. When the angels went away from them, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened when, that God has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. <clears throat>
I have no idea how we found the baby. It was as if we knew where to go, which turns to take. We had never been down some of those streets before, but there was something that drew us that night to where the baby lay. And you know what? It wasn't in some grand hotel or a friend's nice home. It was in a manger, a cattle stall. God had chosen a place where they kept barnyard animals for his son to be born. And yet it was a wonderful place. The little baby lay on a warm, clean bed of straw with his mother and father resting peacefully near him. The animals gathered nearby for warmth and the doves cooed a lullaby from the rafters. It was glorious and it was perfect. After the shepherds saw the child, they told their story to all whom they met and all who heard it listened with amazement. I don't remember how long we stayed there. At first we were so excited that all we could do was talk about the light and the singing and the angels. But after a while, we just watched in quiet wonder. Finally, one of the shepherds noticed that night was beginning to fade in the east. and We knew that we needed to return to the sheep. So we left the Holy Family in the cattle stall and returned to the hills, knowing that our lives were forever changed by that tiny baby. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard.
That star that appeared to us that night also shined in a far eastern country. In that land, there were three men of great wealth and knowledge. They were also waiting for the Messiah to come. Some call them kings, others call them magi. Here's what Matthew has to say about them. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod's rule, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star and have come to worship him. King Herod became frightened and summoned the chief, his chief priests to tell him where the Messiah was to be born. They responded, In Bethlehem of Judea. For it is so written by the prophet. Then Herod summoned the wise men and learned from them the precise time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, come and tell me, so that I too can worship him. As the wise men left, the star they had seen in the east reappeared, guiding them to the place where the child was. They rejoiced greatly and entered the house, where they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They knelt and worshipped him with treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, the wise men returned to their country by another road. And Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. So that's the story. A tiny baby born on a cold winter night in a poor, humble cattle stall. A tiny baby whose young mother would nourish him and whose father would raise him in the carpenter's trade. A tiny baby whose short time on earth would burn so brightly that not even death could diminish its, its radiance. And so let us remember the light the angels brought to the shepherds and the light of the star that shined over the stable. It is the light of God's gift to each of us at Christmas. May that light shine each day within our lives and may the joy of this Christmas season live within our hearts throughout the year and always. Gloria, indeed. Would you join with me in one more round of applause for our choir director, Jane, our or organist, Mary Ann, our readers, our musicians, our sound guys. What a wonderful, wonderful morning. Thank you all.
So we will let that be the last word on the day. The choir will, of course, have a benediction, a couple of announcements before we dismiss, if that would be okay. Um, of course, we have enjoyed so much Christmas music today, and there is much more to come over the course of the next week. So just wanted to give you a heads up about what the next week will look like. Again, we will be here on Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m. for our Advent prayer and communion service. You are welcome to gather here in the sanctuary or gather with us online for our final of those four, uh, those four uh, prayer and communion services. And then next Sunday, of course, next Sunday is Christmas Eve. It'll be, it's special when Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. And so we've got a little different schedule we'd like to use for next week. We will be here on Sunday morning for a simple time of morning prayer. And I'm very happy to announce that Kay and Alan Stiles have, been, have said that they would like to come and to lead that for us. And so that will be a very simple time, about a half hour of simple prayer um, and readying ourselves uh, for the coming of the Christ child. And then on Sunday evening, uh, Christmas Eve, we will have our full-blown candlelight Christmas Eve services at 4 o'clock p.m. and at 7 o'clock p.m. They will be identical services. Everything will be the same except that our bell choir will play at the 4 o'clock service and our choir will be singing at the 7 o'clock service. Um, but otherwise, if you're like, do I get candles at 4? You get candles in silent night at 4 o'clock, I promise. <clears throat> Other announcements is that, uh, and you can look on the back of your insert for a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we are in need of some large plastic storage totes or bins to help us organize our, uh, our, our stuff from the uh, Christmas Comes to Life uh, decorations. If you'd like to help us out with that, you can bring it into the church. Just write CCTL on it, Christmas Comes to Life, and leave it in the vestry. You can contact Sandy Mathias, who is somewhere in the sanctuary today, and Sandy will be able to help you with that. Also, um, Scrip. Um, for those of you who like using Scrip at this time of the year, um, to not only uh, support whatever it is you're supporting, but also support the church, um, Scrip or the final Scrip order for 2023 is due today. Does that say what does what time? At two, okay, I can't I can't read either of them from here. At two o'clock p.m. Thank you very much. So if you would like to place a Scrip order for this year, two o'clock p.m. today is the final time to do that. And then uh, one last thing, I was, asked, um, I was asked to ask the congregation a question. If you came in through the vestry today, you saw that there is a very large gift out there that says, to the youth of St. Mary's. The youth of St. Mary's were arguing with me today about when they could open that. So they asked me to ask you all if it would be okay if right after the service they went out and opened up that Christmas present. can either be today or you could make them suffer and wait till next week. But uh, all those in favor, say aye. They said it's okay. All right. So, and so we'd love to invite you all, along with our youth, to go out to the vestry afterwards for a time of celebration and refreshment. Um, uh, we've set everything up out there, so please come out and enjoy some continued time of fellowship as we uh, congratulate and celebrate with our choir today. Um, and I think there's one final announcement from our shepherd boy. Uh, <laughs> shepherd, if you would come. <coughs> I need to borrow that. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, from the old shepherd of church, from church and ministry here. And uh, first off, I, I am digging the staff, so I, I, it, I, we'll have to pass it off and you know, do that. I'm looking forward to it. Um, at this time of the year, we certainly express gratitude and thanks for everyone for all that they've done. So from church and ministry, um, we're going to be uh, giving some... Uh, ways to show to honor our paid staff. So music staff, Jane and Marianne and Alice. Um, uh, I'm missing folks, uh, Ashley and Sabrina and Lisa Brown and all who work for us here at the church. Um, Debbie and myself and Stacy will be, as we see you in this coming week, we'll be handing off our, our thoughts on behalf of church and ministry and the church. So first, let's give them a round of applause. And one final note, so also on behalf of church and ministry, and certainly all of you, the congregation here, friends and family of St. Mary's, we want to say a big thank you to Pastor Sam and to his family and to all who help us in a variety of ways, flute and food and all the different ways that happens there. So I want to thank them. Now, obviously, they don't know this, but, you know, we, we were collecting your contributions from the couple, past couple of weeks, so sh you didn't tell them that, right? Uh, but we want to present Sam with uh, the token of our appreciation. 
and also one of the best. Thank you. I, I think it's size small. We'll have to check. <laughs> but allow me to express my gratitude. And uh, as I look over here, I, I ran into Miss Becky coming in, uh, coming in earlier today and uh, just managed to see her coming up the walkway. And so I was standing right at the door. So I said, I said, I'm going to make sure Miss Becky gets in. And so I said to her, I said, look, Miss Becky, I said, I believe it was the psalmist who wrote, I'd rather be a doorman at the house of the Lord than live in the palaces of, of, of the rich. And, uh, and that has always been sort of how I approach this. I would, I would come here and would just be a doorman at, at, at the door, simply opening the door for others to enjoy the love of Christ. But the fact that you let me, allow me to be your pastor, give a home for me and my family uh, to call home, uh, a home here spiritually and also very literally right across there, um, very much it is, it is the joy of my life to be able to serve in this capacity. So thank you also very, very much for your kindness, for your friendship and our shared partnership in the gospel. It is indeed a joy, so thank you. And so with that, I'll invite our choir to dismiss us to the week.